have to acknowledge the genius of the uh, curation of this session because uh, the project that I want to talk to you about uh, is in a way uh, an experimental new program that is um, kind of designed for people exactly like Steph and the process that he was describing and looking at uh, the kind of uh, infrastructure that institutions might create in support of this process, this practice. Um, so uh, the program that I run is called New Inc. Uh, it's an experimental new program uh, that launched uh, just in September at the New Museum of Contemporary Art in New York City and it's the first museum-led incubator. Um, just a little bit of background about the new museum. Uh, it was founded in 1977 with a mission of supporting new art and new ideas. Um, it was dedicated to showing contemporary art, emerging art, at a time when very few institutions were doing so. And because of that, I think, retains a very uh, kind of trailblazing experimental spirit that allows it to do things like start an incubator at an art museum, which is kind of a... Uh, weird fit in, in a lot of ways. Um, we moved on to the Bowery uh, in 2007 um, and then purchased the building next door uh, the following year. And, um, you know, since that time, we kind of housed various uh, temporary curatorial programs in the building. But a few years ago, our director, Lisa Phillips, began envisioning a different kind of program that might exist here um, that was informed by ongoing changes in the nature of creative practice, as well as a kind of general evolution um, that we noticed in our relationship to work, um, to ownership, brought about by the digital age. And to give a little bit of context of that, I'm going to throw some statistics at you, so bear with me. Um, New Inc. is really born out of a fundamental shift in the nature of work today. We're seeing a tendency towards an increasingly freelance, increasingly entrepreneurial work culture. Um, this has to do with the current economic climate, sure, but um, it's also, I think, a reflection of the younger generation's relationship to work. Namely, a desire to work with purpose and a sense of fulfillment and passion. Um, but being your own boss also means you're running your own business and shouldering all of the risks and liabilities that that entails. And this is a trend that is not unique to the cultural sector, but as some of you may know, um, business hasn't always been the cultural sector's forte. Um, in New York City, the creative industries are thriving thanks to a growing number of prestigious art design and architecture programs. The city schools are graduating twice as many arts and design graduates as any other city in the US. And many of these graduates want to stay and build their businesses uh, here, but an overwhelming number feel like they haven't received the proper training to do so. So it became clear to us that there was a growing need for a professional development program geared towards artists and designers embarking on entrepreneurial ventures or thinking about how they can leverage the intellectual property of the work that they were creating. We surveyed the landscape, studied and drew inspiration from programs that occupy similar spaces, and set about building something new, something that was a bit of an amalgamation of these different um, programs, and that was informed by the needs and the values of the community that we were looking to serve. That community is comprised of cultural practitioners who are typically exploring hybrid and interdisciplinary forms of practice, often inventing new tools and techniques along the way. Um, they're typically fluent in technology, which doesn't necessarily mean that they're all coders, uh, rather that their practice is informed by and responding to digital culture. And they're often thinking and working more entrepreneurially uh, because of their hybrid nature. They don't neatly fit into existing programs, so they end up falling through the cracks, having to invent new business models along the way, um, just because they're working in this emerging space. Um, our community is exploring different models towards establishing a sustainable creative practice. At New Inc, um, they are developing not only their ideas, but also a strategy for supporting those ideas. And that could range from you know, traditional grant funding to VC funding to Kickstarter and crowdfunding. As an incubator catering to a different kind of entrepreneur, as well as one being run by a nonprofit, you can imagine we're doing things a little bit differently. Um, in some ways, I kind of like to think of New Inc. as 
uh, the institutional critique of in incubators. <laughs> so we're trying to practice what we preach and working towards uh, building a sustainable business model for New Inc. This means that currently our members pay to be here but retain 100% of their intellectual property. Um, we also believe that success is not necessarily defined by a project securing VC funding or achieving scale, though a good number of our community um, has those aspirations in mind, and that's great. Um, like an artist residency, people at New Inc. often start with a question or provocation. They set about investigating, experimenting, doing R&D, and occasionally maybe failing their way to success or, or some sort of uh, plan. And while creativity is one of the main buzzwords in Silicon Valley right now, I think the voice of cultural practitioners, of designers, yes, but also importantly artists, is largely missing from these conversations. And New Inc. seeks to emphasize the importance of this perspective and to amplify this voice, thereby contributing to the greater diversity in the tech industry. I think it's just as important to have the artistic perspective in the mix as it is to have you know, women or minorities in the mix as well. So if we're to boil all this down into a single sentence, this is what we've come up with as our kind of mission statement. Um, New Inc. is fusing artistic provocation with the entrepreneurial spirit to enable ideas that make culture better. And I'll be the first to admit, it's not perfect yet, but um, over the past year, this is as close as we've gotten at you know, really kind of honing in on what we're trying to do and stand for. In practical terms, uh, what that means is that we've convened a community that's exploring bold, new, exciting, and sometimes critical ideas at the intersection of culture and technology. Together, we're investigating what kinds of models might support this work, from the conventional to the novel to the plain crazy. Um, our approach is not prescriptive. We have no right answers, no magic bullet. We're kind of a startup incubating startups in a lot of ways. We're figuring it out together. And the members are as likely to learn from one another as they are from our programs and events. Uh, for us, creating community and establishing a safe space to ask questions, work through challenges together, and have access to professional resources was one of the most important offerings of New Inc. Um, but beyond the business skills, the culture that we wanted to engender is one that is critical and inquisitive, thoughtful and conscientious about the kind of world we want to live in and the role that both culture and technology can play in getting us there. So we officially kicked off on September 2nd. Uh, we moved into our new home uh, next door to the museum and we welcomed our first group of 40 full-time and 40 part-time members. Um, we also hold uh, two anchor tenants, a uh, digital arts organization uh, called Rhizome that's been an affiliate of the new museum for the past 12 years and a program out of Columbia University's Graduate School of Architecture Planning and Preservation called uh, Studio X. Um, these are just some shots of the space. We occupy 8,000 square feet um, and have a variety of different workspaces. This is our event space. Obviously, it's much busier than what you see in these photos. Uh, these are the architect's pristine shots, and it also is much messier than what appears here. <laughs> um, so who's at New Inc? What kinds of artists and designers is it for? What kind of ideas are we trying to support and enable? I kind of want to dig into a couple of the projects that I think exemplify what we're doing. Um, some of you might be familiar with the work of Adam Harvey. Adam is an artist uh, who became fascinated with computer vision and imaging technologies and how those are related uh, to increasingly widespread surveillance tools. Uh, this project, CV Dazzle, was one of his earliest investigations into subverting facial recognition algorithms typically employed by computer vision software by using very simple and clever hair and makeup. Um, he then went on to create a series of garments that protect the wearer from thermal imaging technology commonly used by drones. This resulted in an ongoing body of work Adam calls the Privacy Gift Shop, which actually launched at the New Museum in 2013. Um, it's a cross between an art project and an e-commerce platform where Adam sells his critical products. The works have been displayed in galleries and museums as well as purchased by the military. Um, when talking about his work, Adam says that he chose to create the gift shop because it was important for him to complete the thought, to complete the artistic gesture uh, that these concepts put out into the world. Um, it didn't seem like enough to just put the ideas out there 
because they could easily be replicated and commercialized by others. And he wanted to retain the ownership of these ideas because it was empowering to him. Um, and also to kind of dissuade copycats from exploiting these ideas. Um, at New Inc, he's been working on figuring out how to make this a sustainable business model for himself um, so that the sale of these works could go on to allow him to continue doing R&D, continue developing um, new projects in this space. Um, and you know, his next project is gonna be launching in April um, with a Kickstarter, and it's gonna be an open source toolkit for creating uh, these hats that, again, thwart uh, facial recognition. Um, another uh, common theme that I see at New Inc. is this one of the artist as inventor. Um, in the case of Adam, he's in inventing these conceptual products um, that are meant as a provocation, a way to start a conversation and raise awareness, but also they're actually useful. Um, this is an example of another kind of artistic invention. Many of the artists and designers at New Inc. are working on tools that are really an outgrowth of their own creative need or inquiry. Um, this is a project called Depth Kit from James George and Alexander Porter. Um, their interest in computational photography and filmmaking led them to create uh, a filmmaking device that marries a uh, Microsoft Connect, uh, uses the depth sensor of this game controller uh, with a typical uh, SLR, um, which they're taking the color RGB data from and mapping it onto the depth data from the Connect, um, essentially creating a new kind of 3D filmmaking. And this came out of some creative experiments where they took it down into the subway and were doing these kind of like dystopian uh, photographs of people in the New York City subway system. Um, then they applied it to a documentary that um, they were working on called Clouds, which I believe was here last year, um, and, and used it as a way to tell the story of this community that they're a part of, of creative coders. And in order to realize the film, um, you know, this very ambitious snapshot of a, of a community of their peers, they had to develop the tools to shoot and edit this footage, which they also released open source online. But an interesting thing happened along the way. One, uh, the open source tool that they uh, created um, caught the attention of professional uh, users in the visual effects space um, who were interested in this tool as uh, as a potential uh, filmmaking tool for virtual reality because it has this like innate 3D uh, characteristics. And um, also through this work that they were doing um, around the toolkit and continuing investigations into new imaging technologies, they created a studio that does both commissioned work and R&D, um, kind of furthering their investigation and trying to create a symbiotic system between these various um, initiatives that they're pursuing. Um, another artist uh, at New Inc. is the photographer Carlo Vanderoor, who's working on a project called Satellite Lab. Um, in his photography, he's really interested in the capacity that imaging technology has to represent our world. He's been using light to play with the representation of time in a moving image. And in this uh, project, he is using high-speed cameras to freeze a single moment, um, yet moving light sources around in real time within that frozen moment. Um, so it is essentially creating a new way of capturing an image um, and, and having a sort of dynamic moving still. Um, and essentially they're arresting time, um, but moving light around this uh, kind of sculpture frozen in midair. Um, and this is all happening in camera, there's no CG. Um, and this is something that he came up with because he wanted it for himself, but is now you know, at New Inc. applied for a patent and is uh, thinking about ways that this uh, technology is going to be useful for filmmakers, for other um, type of creatives. Um, to so segue into a different kind of entrepreneur, we also have somewhat more traditional startups um, that are creating uh, platforms and tools that enable others to flex their creative muscle. Um, this is one called Print All Over Me, which wants to uh, A, enable people to create uh, 
custom garments to participate in the creative process around um, their clothing, which has become so kind of cheapened by uh, the fast commerce, um, and to you know create meaningful interactions around the clothing. Um, and it's a platform where they work with designers to create custom silhouettes, really beautiful shapes, um, and then you can upload any image and create a custom garment. Um, it's also a platform where you can collect, share, and uh, make money from the sale of these items. They, a typical user receives 20% of the sale. Um, another platform that we have at New Inc. is called New Hive, and it's a multimedia publishing platform that provides a blank space and custom tools for creating experiences on the web. Um, it is a really exciting tool that is being employed by artists. Um, it's, you, know, you can easily upload, drag and drop text, links, photos, videos, drawings, music, GIFs, YouTube content, all sorts of things, and um, it's something that artists are describing as, um, as obvious and essential as Adobe's creative suite for um, creating really dynamic uh, web artworks, essentially. Um, and creators with any technical skill level can use New Hive. Um, I think what's really exciting for me is that in many ways, the web has become sort of templatized and standardized and a little bit homogenized in terms of its aesthetic. And something like this really makes it easy for people to have that creative expression um, without having that high barrier to entry that you know coding requires. Um, so how have our ambitious goals for New Inc. manifested over the past six months, really quick. Um, we've been building a strong foundation by focusing on our community, first and foremost. Investing in creating a supportive and collaborative environment was our first priority. And we've been cultivating that through small group discussions, peer-to-peer -peer skill shares, and regular social events in the space. Uh, we were constantly trying to improve our facilities, apparently designing a space and inhabiting it with roughly 80 creatives are two very different things. Um, but a major area of focus for us has been professional development and education and resources and mentorship. From our first month, we've had three to five events happening at New Inc. every week, uh, ranging from workshops and seminars on topics like financial modeling and intellectual property to brand devel development and fundraising strategies. Um, and to me, this is the most important part of the program. Uh, I really want to look at how how can ownership of uh, intellectual property and a knowledge of how the system works empower artists to devise new methodologies for navigating both the market forces of the cultural and commercial sectors. Um, we're lucky to have a really great advisory board that we're working with. Um, and we've also been using the new museum as a platform for showcasing the work of our members. Um, we've done a number of collaborations with members um, at New Inc. Um, to kind of leverage the museum um, as a as another resource that we have to offer. Um, we're starting to tell our story about what's happening at New Inc. Um, we just launched a blog, and um, this is something that we get asked a lot. How are we measuring success? The truth is, we don't really know yet. I mean, we kind of do, um, but this is what we're thinking about right now. Um, we didn't want to place too narrow of a constraint as to how we were thinking about and defining our success. I think. We're trying to take this first year as a very exploratory year um, where we're implementing and iterating and learning from what's happening in the space. Um, and yeah, I'll get back to you as we know more about how it all evolves. Thank you for having me.